thanks for joining me. We're down at the Classic Car Show, Birmingham NEC. Managed to get in nice and early. We've got a, um, like a pass to get me in just pre-people, so uh, we can have a good look round. Gonna nip over to the car auction straight away so we can get a preview on all the cars that are going through today. And I'll do a quick live from there, so there will be a live on there somewhere. Um, and then you can, uh, yeah, see what's up for grabs. But look at the quality of this stuff in here. It's absolutely amazing. Really buzzing, it's gonna be a great day. Let's go and have a look, see what we've got. Right, here we go. What's first on the list? Well, it's gotta be the Sunbeams. Those of you that follow the channel know I've got a real soft spot for the Sunbeams. My first car was a Sunbeam. I've always wanted a Lotus Sunbeam. Maybe today's the day. Can I buy myself one? <laughs> but, oh my goodness me. Look at these beauties. They are just, I don't know, there's something about them. They're absolutely stunning. Love it, love it, love it. Oh, can we have a little look inside? Oh, look at that. Mm. Not everybody's cup of tea, but for me, these are a driver's car. They really are. Rear, rear wheel drive, nice amount of power at the front. So controllable. And that's why they did so well in the World Rally. But uh, yeah, just look at that. It's got the right front on it as well, same as what mine was. In here. Oh, look at this, taking me back. This one is up for sale, <laughs> 27,000 pound. Oh God, it fits like a glove. It fits like a glove. Just, oh my goodness me. It's got a full roll cage in it race spec five-speed gearbox with a dog leg first gear is down second third fourth up and then fifth down to the bottom again oh it is like I say not putting an old shoe it's just beautiful <laughs> oh. Let's have a look under here. Oh, it's all there, look. It's all there. It's not bad, is it? It's pretty tidy, that is. Right, underneath don't look too bad. What we got? Got a little bit of oil going on there. Oh yeah, we've got a bit of oil oil leak out the back of the box. Well, it's filling up now. Got plenty of people coming in. We've also got plenty of beautiful cars. I just don't know where to look because every time you turn around, you see something amazing. There's just so much time and effort gone into building these cars. I just can't, you can't believe the hours that have gone into it. I mean, and some of the stuff they've chose to re restore and renovate. It's, uh, well, everything's got a story, hasn't it? Every car, whether it was your first car, whether it was one your dad had, um, you know, a, 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 just a, a car that you idolised when you were younger, um, that's what it's all about, I think, that, and that's the beauty of it. Every car's got a story. Well, I mean, look at that. That is out of fortune spent on it. that it's had all of the wiring removed or hidden everything's all been piped down the back it's bonkers it's absolutely bonkers everybody loves a good mini we've got a few here let's have a look see what we've got twin cam mini oh, oh you're right oh Twin, oh, twin engine, not twin cam. I'm misreading it. There must be one in the back as well, then. Oh, yeah, we have got engine in the back. Oh, what a bizarre looking thing. 
Oh, these are both, uh, we've got two here with these twin engines in them. They are a bit unusual, aren't they? I don't know, I think I'd rather just rip the old engine out and shove a uh, Honda K20 in there. Probably go faster as well. That's funny, that, what I was just talking about. Turn the corner, and here we go, look. But the engine at the front is in transverse. But, looking at the back, we've got a diff and it's rear-wheel drive. So they must have some kind of transfer box from the gearbox to put a drive show. Unless it's four-wheel drive, maybe it's four-wheel drive. Is this four-wheel drive? Yes. Ah, there you go, four-wheel drive. Yeah, four-wheel drive. God yeah. blimey, what a, is this yours? Yes. <laughs> That's off to this guy. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> so, how long has it took to build that? Uh, initially, two years. So like a full restoration, but it wasn't four wheel driving, it wasn't turbocharged. So restoration wise, it took two years to build with the engine conversion. And then it's just progressed from there, really. It is it absolutely immaculate, to do the isn't it? Drive it's gorgeous. I mean, good it's lord, the hours that you've spent to, to produce this. To, I mean, look at the quality of that. Everything about it, the finish. So have you done it all yourself? Everything, yeah. Bought the paint. Right. I've done everything from fabricating a full exhaust system, uh, building the engine, turbocharging. It's turboed as well? Yeah, it's turboed. <laughs> 330 horsepower. <laughs> Turbo chores! Oh my god! Oh yeah, oh look at the work. I didn't even see that. The work on that, it's got everything on it. Jesus, that is a cramming in there. Intercoolers. Shut the doors, shut the bonnet, it just looks like a mini. It does, yeah, you've kept it, you've kept it looking really original. It is, it is, um, yeah, I'm just saying, I've just been in the scene, there's some over there, twin engine minis, and I've just said, why would you do that? Just stick an under engine in there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and I come around yeah, the corner and there it is. Yeah, I was like, there yeah. it is, look. But yeah, it is, uh, so the front don't come off this one then? It this does, is, yes. Oh, it does I'm, come off? I made it so it all, it's all steel, <coughs> it's all removable as well. Wow. Just for ease. Yeah, no, that is just absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. Wow. There's just so much stuff in here. It's. It's a bonkers show, it's massive. And I don't know where to look because everywhere I am looking, there's so much stuff. I don't want to just record absolutely tons of footage. Um, so I'm going to try and find some specifics that I like and maybe you'll like it. Um, so yeah, stick with me and I'll try and pick some beauties out. Right, here we go. This takes me back, not even his cup of tea, but look what we've got here. <laughs> this is the Metro. Now my brother, his first car was one almost exactly the same as this. Orange, same colour, one litre. Look at that. It's, oh, it just takes you back. Instantly I'm transformed oh, to what was that, 1987, something like that. And um, oh, reminiscing. <laughs> oh, it's that time machine feeling again. Blimey. So, my brother had one, my mum had one. And then I had the MG and I'm going to find one again. I do like my little MG Metro, that was... Didn't look like that though, mine didn't. Mine was a 1984. <sighs> Can we find one with the same wheels and everything on it? See, that was the kind of wheels I had on mine, very similar to that. I don't know if there's one here. Oh, 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 it was silver as well. No, I don't think there is. Here's the MG, so yeah, we've got the... It looked like this, is this a... Oh, this is a Y Reg. Mine was an A Reg. Yeah, same dashboard and everything though. When I talk about quality of turnout, just look at this guy. L&J vehicle specialists have bought along these, well, Cosworths, these fast forwards. God, they are immaculate, honestly. There isn't a thing that's out of place. Everything is just, as you look at it, you think, has it been used? It's so perfect. I mean, look at the underneath of this. You know, you think about the top of the car, these guys are polishing the underneaths as well. It is absolutely immaculate. The paintwork has got a deep depth to it. The shine is unbelievable. It's better than it was when it came out of the factory. It really is. Look at the... I mean, everything about it. Spotless, absolutely spotless, gorgeous. I've always had a bit of a soft spot for this one as well, the Mark 1 RS Focus. 
nice. And they're going up in value, getting more and more expensive. If you'd have picked one of those up a few years ago, you could get them for a snip and now they're, um, they're just, oh, yeah, the value is racing. Great investment. It's always got a massive auto jumble. We've got loads and loads and loads of parts, distributors, brakes, chroming, steering wheels, wheels, you name it. Like, you know, if you're trying to build a classic car, if you're restoring one, then obviously this is the place to come. You've got so many bits and pieces that you could never find it. Yeah, and maybe they're here tucked away somewhere. I do need an alternator for the old classic coffee van. So maybe I'll find one here, you never know. We'll keep looking. Oh, look at these beautiful carburettors. Now I had the Westfield, which had got a V8 engine in it. It got the, uh, the Rover V8 with a John Eels 4.3. It was running a massive Holly carb on it. Um, but yeah, some twin 40s, twin 45s. All this sort of stuff, get on your, uh, get one of those on your Escort or your Sunbeam. <laughs> oh, so you can get anything here. It's amazing the stuff that they've got. And people are still making and remanufacturing all these old parts. Um, so that you can restore these cars and bring them back to life. Now what we've got here as well, and if you're watching the Colin Furs channel or um, Yorkshire Restorations, but uh, this is the, one of their cars, this is the, is it Alex? Auto Alex's car? Yes, Auto Alex, here he is, look. This is the one that's just been restored by Yorkshire Restorations by Ryan. But they did a cracking job on it. I followed the progress of the, of the build and um, yeah, it was a, it was a, a decent build. But it looks like it's all finished, finally. I've just seen this old fella look. Well, I did 26 years working for the AA. And uh, <laughs> the old biking sidecar. Now, these weren't around when I was uh, a patrol. The company back then was amazing. I don't know if it's the same now, but uh, yeah, it was. Now, I was always told that these were a bit of a myth. This is the old TV detector van. Back in the day, you used to have these driving around the streets, supposedly, checking up on your, uh, have you got a signal coming from your house? Have you got a license? Um, I think it was all a bit of a myth, to be fair. Now, I was just talking about these vans. You see, I was always led to believe that they were a myth. You saw these vans driving round, yeah. but they didn't actually do anything. They were just there to scare you into buying a licence. Well, I'm telling you the story. This man's father worked on the GPO on that. All right. And he says, yes, it did work, because a cathode ray television gives off a signal. Cathode ray. They could, they, could they pinpoint that to the, the particular house? They stand and outside the house, and then the television point, and then they would check the records, and then somebody would go around and knock on the door. They oh. say it happened, so it yeah. did work. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But equally, if you look at that signboard over there. What, this one? Well, you, or you can see all the gearing in there, look. They used to put in the newspaper. Oh yes, yeah, scary after coming then. Round and everybody rush round to the post office, <laughs> get a license. So it was, I think more of the I think I think that I think that's the I case. Think it's more of the terrible. I wonder how many people they did actually prosecute for not having T V licenses. I have no idea, but they did they did go for people and then I think maybe they gave them some grace. This though is a cracking bit of nostalgia, isn't it? it? Really is. Love that. Absolutely love it. I've just learnt something new because I've never heard of Roots Group. I've never heard of this and it turns out that they owned Hillman, Minx, Tolbert, Sunbeam, Tolbert, um, Humber, Singer, Singer, Comma Carrier. Comma ca which is why the, 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 is the van, which is why the van's on the. I've been in the motor trade for 30 plus years and I didn't know that. I, well, I, I didn't know. Last just one, shows you. Last one's real 50 years ago, so yeah. they're pretty old. And these go back to the late 20s. So yeah. They're... The death of the, the great British but motor industry, that's that the problem. We assemble the Roots Group cars in this area. Oh, Lord, down here, yeah. Hillman, Singer. Oh, we're going to have a good look round. Here's the imp that was built in Oh, the Hill, well, the Hillman imp, we love Hillman those. We had a quick look at those, yeah. And then further down is Sunbeam, uh, Alpine, Rapier, and all those things. And then further down is uh, Simca, which is part of the. Yeah, group. that is so interesting because yeah. I say it's something I never knew, and yeah. now I do. Worthwhile coming yeah, for that we one. We are the worldwide centre for all things roots. The Hillman Minx. Hillman Imp, but ain't it fascinating? I never knew that. I didn't know they were all a part of this bigger group, but uh, yeah, it just takes, it shows you, and they've got all the archives, everything, all the original drawings. 
So if you want uh, some panels making, if you're a panel building company, you'll go straight to, to Roots there and they'll give you all the information you need to know. I mean, and I do love him. I do love helming him. What about this for a seat, look? <laughs> the death seat. <laughs> you imagine having a rear ender with that? That could take the back of your head off. But he's got a full on fold out chair in the back of the car. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, isn't it? Triumph Roadster. Even put a funny cutout in the boot lid so you can actually see out. <laughs> Beautiful Corvette Stingray, look at that. That's glorious. Got some old American muscle as well down here. <laughs> Got the Mustangs, Smokey and the Bandit sort of territory, isn't it? I always think of those old American films you used to watch. Yeah. Featuring all these oh, big American muscle cars. We've got the Plymouth over here. <laughs> I think that was in Cars, the kids' programme as well, didn't they use that as a feature car? You see, I was always Dukes of Hazard. I want to see a uh, Dodge Charger. <laughs> I can't find one though. Oh, we've got some more over there. What have we got over here? The NYPD's here. Eat your heart out. Martin McFly. The DeLoreans are back. <laughs> look at that, it's a full... A full copy look. That's unbelievable. Imagine the amount of time and effort you spent to build a... Uh, a film show car like that. I wonder if it still drives. Has it still got an engine in it? Maybe it has, I don't know. It's got to, it? You've still got to be able to get it going and drive it. I don't know, though, the tyres don't look like they've been on the road. Maybe it's just push it about now. Oh, I've been assured it does still drive. It is road. It's not got an MOT, though, surely. It doesn't even put it on. Of course. Yes, MOT exempt. Yeah. <laughs> How's you driving down the high street in that? Fantastic. Oh, Chevrolet Camaro. And what was I just saying? Oh, here it is. Look round here. Look what I've just found. It's the General Lee. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word. Oh, there it is. What a beauty. <laughs> All those years spent watching Bow and Luke driving around in the old General. There it is, look. Wow, it looks nice. It, that is immaculate. It is absolutely gorgeous. Let's have a picture of that one. <laughs> one for the scrapbook. This is another one that it's a little soft spot with me, the old Renegade. Takes me straight back to the A-Team. They always had a Renegade being chased by a, a, an army jeep and they'd be flying them, crashing them and everything, but uh, cracking looking bit of kit. And this was the one that always looked nice with the big fat wheels on it. Whereas the Wrangler, no, I wasn't so keen on that, but the Renegade, yeah, lovely looking, lovely looking jeep. More of a modern classic, we've got the old, you know, you know 205 GTIs. You can still pick these up at a reasonable price. They're going through the auction sometimes for less than 10 grand. And they make a nice modern classic. Oh, so this is the chap who owns this. This is the giraffe, isn't it? Is it? <laughs> What's, the I've, griff. The griff. Oh, <laughs> I've never even seen one. I've not heard of this before. What's the, what's the crack? What is the, I mean, so obviously the 205 a, GTI, but this is different, isn't it? So this was a special edition that was sold on the continent, France, Germany, the Netherlands, and so on. Yeah. And it was like a highly specced GTI. Okay, extra bits on it. Um, and it never came to the UK. Right. Peugeot UK ordered just one to evaluate in right hand drive from the factory. Wow. This is it. They decided not to go with the Griff, so the Griff was never sold here. You could get this colour, but not this model. So this was the only one? This is the only factory produced right hand drive Griff. Wow. In existence. And you've got it. And I've got it. <laughs> it took That's a long amazing. time to track it down, but I've got it. So you, you specifically went looking for it? Yeah. I've got a couple of other two cars as well, so I was aware of this one, and it was in an absolutely terrible state when I got it because the previous owners didn't know what it was. So all the special bits had gone. It had an engine conversion; it had been lowered. Oh my word! Real mess. So right. part way through the restoration now. That is just. I mean, look at that. It, is, it looks absolutely stunning. It really does. And I've got a bit of a soft spot for these, as you know, if you followed the last video we did at the car show. Um, I, I used to look after one for somebody. It was a Turbo Technics converted okay, yeah. 1.9 GTI. Yeah. This was back in 1991. <laughs> Going years back. Ago. But at the time, it was a rocket. It really yeah. was unbelievable. Yeah. But he got a standing gearbox in it. Okay. 
So um, when you opened it up, especially if it was a wet road, it was a nightmare. The, 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 the wheels just lit up. You know, it did 125 mile an hour flat out. Right. But that was it. it just, you know, it got there rapid. Yeah. But as soon as you, topped out. that was it. It was just topped out. Yeah. But it was a, it was such a fun car to drive, and I very nearly had one. I nearly had a B Reg, a 1.6 GTI. Um, that was back in, I want to say that was 1991 again. Um, but you know what I went for instead? The MG Metro. <laughs> it was all about the price. I was a young lad. I couldn't afford the insurance on one of these. It was, it was a nightmare, whereas the Metro were a bit cheaper. But yeah, this is an absolutely beautiful looking car. Thanks for talking to me. You're very welcome. Nice to talk. Well, here we go. Not really an old classic, but a more of a modern one. Again, this takes me back to working at the Volvo. I was there in 19... Oh, I was there. I started there in 1989 before the 850s came out but then I did go back when the 850s were there and these were the saviour of Volvo to be fair they were on their knees they were really struggling to sell cars and then they bought this model out and it went like well hot cakes they sold loads of them and they saved the company in my opinion anyway T5R as well absolute rocket ship back in the day it was a quick car especially for a big motor as well. And we all remember the touring cars that they Talking did. Talking about the Volvo touring car earlier, and actually they've got one here. <laughs> there it is. Oh, see, that takes me back. When I was working at Volvo, we actually got a trip down to Silverstone with Tom Walkinshaw Racing to watch the, uh, to watch the, the touring cars. And the Volvo Estate was uh, in action. It, I think it actually won that day. Back in the bygone days when I worked for the AA, you'd often come across something like this on a damp, cold morning. Look under the bonnet and you'd see sparks jumping everywhere. The, the rotor arm, the distributed cap, all at the front here, the HT leads, prone to getting the damp and the water in there. Quick squirt of the duck oil and away they'd go. <laughs> oh my goodness, mate, this takes me back. And I still suffer with this problem today. 1988 or thereabouts, I bought one of these to take the engine out and put it into an old Mini that we'd got. Jacked it up and I'm pulling on the front, trying to get the bumper off and it came off the axle stands, fell forward, landed on my knee and popped my ankle out. Oh, you fighter. And I still get grief on my ankle now, and that was all those years ago. So yeah, lesson be learned. Don't use axle stands. <laughs> no, use them definitely, but yeah, put the handbrake on a bit tighter. You can't beat a crazy conversion. Look at that. Pop that into a Mark 1 Golf. <laughs> but it looks stunning. All the, well, it's all been de-wired, look. There ain't a wire on show. Everything's tucked away down the back. I just love the amount of work and effort that's gone into this. It's even had the seats made, look, specifically. This is the original interior material that's been put onto Sparco, um, oh, Recaro seats, look, with the Sparco harnesses. That is incredible. Oh, it's been featured in the magazine and everything. Oh, I mean, look at that, that is immaculate. Well, I'm reminiscing a little bit as well. This colour, Audi, we had the Audi 80 Cabriolet, uh, which was a 1995, but it was in that same colour. Oh, speak of the devil, there it is. Maybe not the same car, but it's definitely, uh, oh, that is the cab, that is it, that's the same shape and everything. Oh my word, yeah, oh that takes me back, I'll see if I can find a picture of it and show you, but it was a lovely car. Well, reminiscing again, and if you're into a Volkswagen Beetle, look at that. So unique, the styling on them, and this one's been uh, completely V-dubbed, <laughs> look at that, cool flow air thing on the side, look. Air conditioning, these were a nice looking car. Alpine V6. Just styling on it, it's gorgeous. And obviously the engine in that is what um, was put into the DeLorean. And this brings me back down to uh, where I started and that's the Audi stand. Oh, and my good friend Michael. <laughs> Hello right. mate, you're all right. Oh yeah. Oh, so this is the bangers and cash car that was completely restored. Michael's done a stunning job on it. Since I last spoke to you though at the last video, 
what, this, what, this is. We're, no, we're not live. We're just recording. No, all right. right. So, um, what what problems have you had this year, or has it been as sweet? Have you had some issues to contend with? No, I've had uh, issues with it running correctly, so it, it would um, it just didn't sound right. As if I want it, as if Audi chucked it out the factory. That's how I want it. And yeah, it's not quite right. So, so it's, but we're there or thereabouts now. So it was just had like it's, it's, it's unstable. It's, it's running well in it, but it's just like the, it's very very. He wants it perfect. He wants it perfect. It's just been hesitant a little bit, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. But and I've uh, had to trouble with the uh, steering rack because you can't get them. So I've had to have an adaption made by Tony Cliff Engineering. They've welded a piece, made created me a piece, uh, left hand thread, and then it's well cut and welded it on. So I can. This was on the wishbones, was it? On the uh, on the the. the driving arm so I can just change the ball joints on the end. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it is it's, it's absolutely stunning. He's done such a good job on it. We also had something with the handbrake, didn't we? Did you have to do something to the handbrake cables? There was a, yeah, was there yeah, it's that... a one, one endless loop, it should be, but they don't make that anymore, so now it's a two-part one. Oh. So you have to have a, like a balancer in the middle, but the old one just seized up, I'd drive along and then I think, it's not pulling right, I get out of me offside rear the wheel we're blooming off yeah so that's yeah. sort that out so but Just, no, all good now all these all little good. little problems but you overcome them and yeah, um, coming, yeah. this is this is how detailed it is to bring one of these cars back to life there's there's these problems that you've got to overcome that things that you don't well you wouldn't even think of because you can't buy the new parts anymore manufacturing joints and oh, all sorts especially ball joints uh, if you can't bolt on bolt off if you need to get a whole bottom on you can't get it you've got to come up with solutions but it does look absolutely beautiful and uh, he still promised me he's going to take me for a drive in it what's well, the learning curve today so what we've got here this is cx this one's a 650 but look at that turbo they actually made this <laughs> they made it with a turbo on it now this is going back uh, what we're on here, Wiredge, 1982. Um, they did the 500, they did the, six, the 650 turbo. Now, my father-in-law, he did have a, uh, a CX500. Um, it's a lovely V twin engine, but I didn't know, I didn't know they even put a turbo on it. So, this is your bike over here, this one. Look at this beautiful bit of kit. 1986? 83. Oh, 80. Oh, of course. Yeah, B eighty four is uh, is A. Yeah, so and eighty two. So, what made you? Is it was this your first bike or something like that? What what's the history? Why have you chose a CX? What was it? What's your? I came to biking very late. Although yeah. I had a bike when I was very young, um, but I just played about with it in the garage, and then I got made redundant in two thousand and nine, and I thought this is an opportunity to do direct access, and that's what I did. Right. And my first road legal bike as a biker was a Honda Turbo. Really? <laughs> they're, that, they're a pussycat <laughs> until you want them to ride. So when, when was that? 19... In 2009. 2009? Well, obviously these are quite an old bike now, they aren't are they? old bikes, yeah. But you managed to find... I mean, what... I did. Did you specifically look for that? Was it just one you came across? It just happened to be available. <laughs> just... Uh, and, and now you've gone to the extreme and look, you've got like a collection. We've got... I mean, this is... This isn't the original one you had then? No, you got. You, did you sell that one on? No, it's still here. So you did you keep it then? You never got rid, got, it. It. Never right. got rid of it. Never got rid of it. Oh, so you've kept the original ones there, and yes. then these are saved from the scrapper, and they will be revived into serious show bikes. Yeah. But oh. we ride them all. Love it. All of the club ride them all. Our slogan. You need to look at the slogan. Go on. Go on. <laughs> this is our motto. Ride them, don't hide them. That's it. You've got to, ain't you? It's the only yeah. way. You've got to keep them on the road. You've got to make them out there. Enjoy your, enjoy your investment. You can see all the pictures. This is this is your original this bike. Is my bike, <laughs> and it came in a tea chest when I got it, and I rode it to Spain, Belgium, Holland. So you had to do we a just, full uh, build yes. on it before you rode it. Home build, full home build, and we've we just done a thousand mile round trip to Holland. Fantastic. It's great, isn't it? Look at that. And it's a Honda Turbo, 40 years old. Magic. Honda Fear, absolutely brilliant. Love them, absolutely love them. Right down at the Triumph stand. And I'm sure this one, Warnville 750, I'm sure this is what my mate Colin's dad had. John rode one of these 
when I was a dot, he put me on the back of it, took me around the block, and that was the first time I'd ever been on a motorbike. What a bike to try your first ride on. Now, this has caught my eye. It's a stunning Porsche. Look at this. Oh, it's gorgeous. Really is nice. Oh, look at that. Love it. I think that's probably my favourite car here today. It is beautiful. Loving everything about it. Look at that, it is finished to perfection. The paint job on it is just second to none. With some modern modern takes as well. So it's retro but with some modern bits on it. Over here we've got a really tidy dimmer. Peugeot 205 dimmer. Oh look at that. <laughs> and it's always nice to see a tester also. A really nice Cobra as well, up for sale. Look at that, it's been finished off unbelievably well and it is for sale. It just looks right. The proportions are all good on it. Now I worked at Honda for a good few years in the uh, in the main dealers pre S2000, and this is one Honda I really want to get my hands on and have a drive in, but um, as of yet I haven't. But it is a lovely looking car, rear wheel drive, <laughs> Honda technology. So yeah, that's one on my bucket list. I'm going to uh, I'm going to have to get on with one of those and see if we can go for a spin. Track day would be nice. If anybody's got one, they want to take me on a track day. Yeah, I'm up for that. Why would you take a Honda engine and stick it in an Escort or something like that when you could have an S2000? You know what I mean? Just buy the thing that Honda made. It's just still there, isn't it? I mean, how many of these have been written off though? Yeah, tail happy. A, a fair few. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's a gorgeous looking car though. But now Let's have a quick sit in this one. I'll have a sit in it. Now, I hope this is not going to be like the Porsche. Uh, I got in the 911 and I thought, oh my, me, me, it sort of broke a dream because um, it wasn't the best. Oh, but this, this is, like put, this is like putting on an old shoe. It's absolutely gorgeous. Oh, oh, look at that. That is just lovely. I am a Honda boy, I have to say. The thing with the Hondas is the simplicity of the controls as well. They don't go for like 50 million buttons on the dashboard. Like the heating system, you know, you've just got a, a few turns on the dial, temperature control, simplicity, yeah, it all goes on behind this, behind the dashboard, everything is done for you. They just keep it simple, keep it nice, keep it reliable. So, um, yeah, I definitely want to go for a drive in one of these, and like I say, a track day. Oh, yes, please. And I still have to reminisce about the NSXs. Got a real soft spot with me when I was working at Honda back in 1990. We had the NSX dealership and uh, yeah, we had a few come in. So yeah, when I was a young lad, about 19, I was actually driving these around on road test. Can you believe it? <laughs> Great fun, I'll tell you. Funny story, there was a guy who bought one, um, Paul, oh, what was his name? I remember his number plate was Jay Rave. He was a nightclub owner, Paul Bernstein. God, how about that? I remember that one. Um, and he was complaining because his uh, rear tyres were only lasting in 1,500 miles. Um, I'm not surprised though. I think somebody did see him doing some burnouts outside the nightclub. What a car. Well, we've done the Cobras. Now we've got the GT40s. Oh, such an iconic car. I think it's the golf colours for me though. 60th birthday look
Oh, we've got the Porsche stand. I've got a feeling, isn't this the model of car that um, Paul Walker was in when he died, when he crashed? I'm sure that was this one. So this is the Porsche Carrera GT. We've got a really nice example here. E30 BMW M3, rare as ends teeth. Oh, it is just unbelievable. That is stunning. Love that shape, really nice shape. When I was working at BMW, it was my favorite car to drive. So predictable, just really, really nice to run. Can't beat a good road test. Well, it's been a fantastic time here at the show. If you've enjoyed the video, please drop me a little thumbs up, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in another one. Thanks for watching. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day.